welcome to the Knowledge Catalog. This is a continuation of the series under the bio Biological Sciences. We still have the following learning competencies, which are the following. Uh, describe the location of genes in chromosomes and explain the different patterns of non-Mendelian inheritance. You will need your learner's module, particularly in Unit 1, Module 2, pages 2 to 3, and then 19. So yeah, we're skipping ahead so that we would be, we would be able to finish um, learning competency number 3. Let's begin. The following are the parts of uh, this session. The first part is a pre-assessment, which uh, corresponds to short responses, and then discussion regarding the DNA, with the genetic material and chromosomes, and then a discussion ag about incomplete dominance. So uh, realize as well that this is this is a new module. Okay, so this is module two, and the tapos tayo dun sa first module. So we have some uh, new topics for the mod that for this module. Okay, di na tayo di na natin pa gusto niya about the circulatory and the respiratory system. At least not in this part. For the first part, we have the pre-assessment, which only requires short responses. So let's have the first question. Pink four o'clock flowers are obtained from a cross between purebred red flower plant and white flower plant. What is the genotype of the pink flowers? Second question, the structure of the DNA is in a double helix arrangement. The nitrogen bases in each of the chain can only pair with specific bases, like adenine pairs only pairs with thymine, and cytosine pairs only with guanine. If the left chain of a DNA molecule has the nucleotide sequence C, C, G, T, A, G, G, C, C, what is the sequence of the right chain of the DNA molecule? For number three, in some aliens, one center horn or A is co-dominant with two horns or B. If an alien inherits both alleles A, B, then the alien will have three horns. A recessive allele O results in an alien which has no horns. Can you match the genotype into each of the pictures below to write the genotype of the four aliens in the boxes? You have to write the genotype of the four aliens in the boxes. So we have A, B, C, and D. If you're through, let us now talk about, or let us now have the answers. For question number one, it's RW. Question number two, the right chain of the DNA molecule is GGCATCCGG. Question number three has the following answers. So A has OO, B has AA, C has BB, and D has AB. That is it for the pre-assessment. I hope that you got a 3 over 3. Let us now proceed with the next part of this session, which is a discussion regarding the DNA, the genetic material, and chromosomes. So I would like you to observe this illustration okay, and uh, realize that the genes, which is this particular sequence, is actually just a cut in the DNA. And the DNA is this long string that is one to become the chromosome. Theodore Bovary and Walter Sutton propose the chromosome theory of inheritance that states that genes are found in specific regions of chromosomes. The chromosome is this structure right here. Ito yung naka merong winding around histone proteins. Kumbaga, the strings na nag, na nag wind around those histone proteins are what you call as the DNA. And then some parts of the DNA, they are actually coding for a particular uh, trait. And that's what you call as a gene. A gene has these regions, yung mga ends niya, you call them exons, and yung mga nasa gitna niya, you call them introns. Genes are composed of the oxyribonucleic acid, DNA, that are comprised of nucleotides. The nucleotides we are talking about are going to be discussed further, uh, you know, soon. 
Now, uh, I would like to make this uh, discussion quite more fruitful, okay, by of course uh, discussing who were the people behind the DNA, which is in the structure of the DNA, which is actually something, uh, I mean, a particular discovery in science that has led to so many different discoveries back. This uh, woman right here was Rosalind Franklin. Okay, she joined King's College to use X-ray techniques to study the structure of DNA which was then a hot topic in science during the year 1951. She focused x-rays to DNA crystals to study their structure. Despite such brilliance though, her being a female isolated her from being from her colleagues. Um, one of the, her colleagues back then was Morris Wilkins. Um, Wilkins even thought of her as his assistant, actually. And you will soon hate him, actually. I personally have this quite of a poor judgment about Wilkins. In 1952, which was the year that followed, she obtained Photo 51, which is the most, which is the most famous X-ray image of the DNA, which took 100 hours to take and about a year to analyze. Despite everything that she worked on, without her knowledge, Maurice Wilkins took photo 51 and showed it to James Watson and Francis Crick, who were at the time working on the DNA structure as well. Instead of calculating the exact positions of the atoms, ang ginawa na lang ni Nina Crick and Watson is that they only quickly analyzed Franklin's data and used it to create several models. So, nag trial and error sila, and then with logic, they arrived at the right one, which is a double helical structure with the nucleotides, the base pairs, and that are actually quite like rungs of a ladder. This is the kind of structure that we still accept up until today. They published their work in 1953. Watson and Crick, while Franklin had just finished her calculations in the same year, she arrived at the same conclusions, and she also found out that uh, the correct model is what these two, Watson and Crick, have then published. She also published her own manuscript, but unlike these two, what she had her calculations. Franklin's manuscript was Published, okay. But there is this issue about publishing, of course. The journal that pub that published Watson and Crick's uh, work published Franklin's work as well. But it's just that na una dun sa manuscript yung kay Watson and Crick, making her manuscript look like it was inspired instead of it inspiring Watson and Crick's work. There is an incoming helicopter. If you can hear it, <laughs> okay, that means I am still on Earth. <laughs> okay. Now, um, this woman, she died in 1958 because of cancer. Perhaps it's also led or it's also caused by the kind of work that she had. Um, she doesn't know. He, she didn't know, even <laughs> her death, death that uh, Watson and Crick have seen her photo 51. She never knew that. Now, these three, right? Uh, the three, uh, Watson, uh, Crick, and Wilkins, they won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for their uh, for their piece on the DNA. I am sorry I was not able to edit that out. For their piece on the DNA, for their work on the DNA, these three, including Wilkins. Yeah, so the DNA that we know up until now, yeah, that is actually a sad story, but we need to move on. The DNA as you know now has the following uh that has the following parts, okay? So the DNA is a strand of nucleotides, and a nucleotide is comprised of the following, a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and nitrogenous base. A pentose sugar of a DNA is called the oxyribose. The pentose sugar of, a, of an RNA is called a ribose. Yung na, mga nitrogenous bases naman are the following, also shown in pairs. 
So A right here is adenine. It's a nitrogenous base. It is paired with thymine. In the same way, guanine is paired with cytosine. And as you notice as well, adenine and thymine, they have in between them two hydrogen bonds. Whereas for G and C, guanine and cytosine, they, they have three hydrogen bonds. That is the ending of the second part of this session, which is a discussion regarding the DNA, the genetic material, and chromosomes. The last part of this session is going to be about a discussion and on incomplete dominance. So what you see here is a panet square or a pinet square. Okay, so these are my ends are the alleles. So this is one allele and this is another allele for one of the parents. In this case, R and R, they code for red. W and W, they code for white. These are what you call as homozygote because they have the same alleles. So, I mean, they have the same letters. Okay, that is in other words. So, if R is an allele, pareho yung alleles nito. Parehong R. Dito naman, if W is an allele, parehong W yung alleles niya. That's why you call them homozygote. Now, you notice the Ponat square is used uh, like a uh, may meeting lang of these two. Like, say, for instance, R meets with W in this square. So you have RW. R meets with W in this square, so you have RW. Same goes for this square, where R meets with W for, to get RW, and so on. You also notice that instead of having either red or white, for incomplete dominance, what we get as offspring is pink in this case. Now, RW stands as a heterozygote. So this one right here is, an, is a heterozygote. A phenotype is an intermediate between two homozygous phenotypes. Uh, so yung phenotype nito, uh, sabi niya, is intermediate uh, between two homozygous phenotypes. Ibig sabihin nun, um, partly parang red, pero para rin siyang white. So neither allele is dominate, dominant over the other. Um, what this means is the physical manifestation ng mga uh, offspring, such as in this case, mga pink sila, um, ang i-express ng traits is uh, intermediate between dun sa dalawang parents sila. So yeah, nagmimita ang dalawang colors na to, in this case, sa pink. The offspring are not going to display any of the phenotypes of the homozygous parents, but they will be keeping uh, those alleles coming from these parents that they have in their genotypes. So that's it for the discussion on incomplete dominance. I hope that you will not be forgetting the terms na so far na i-add natin sa inyong vocabulary. Okay, so that is the last part for the um, for this session. I hope that you will remember that uh, the following terms say heterozygote, homozygote, phenotype, genotype, and of course, incomplete dominance because you will be needing that for the next uh, video in this series. The Knowledge Catalog is a brand being developed by a teacher creator, yours truly. And I am a high school science teacher in the Philippines and I love developing content I find useful and needed to better my instruction. If you want to support this channel, you may subscribe to it. If you want to, to leave a support through this video, you may like it or leave a positive comment in the comment section. See you in the next video.